Hello, this is Al, K0CN, and I'm back again with my Flex 6700 running Smart STR version 1.8. In this video, I'll be talking about profiles and how easy it is to store, backup, and recall the settings you've made when configuring your Flex radio. When you operate most modern radios, you'll usually need to set up certain features and parameters such as the audio equalizer for your microphone, antenna ports, receive and transmit filters, and different mode specific settings. In the Flex Radio there are many such settings possible and the good news is that after you've gone through the work of making these settings you can easily save and recall them using a feature called Profiles. Designed as part of Smart SDR they allow us to capitalize on the flexibility of this radio. To fully understand profiles, please look at sections 14 and 15 of the Smart SDR software manual. In this video, however, we're just going to create a starting point. The Flex 6000 series radios offers an improved profile system. There are now three categories of profiles microphone, transmit, and global. In this video, we'll be looking a little closer at each of these profile types, starting with the microphone profile. Microphone profiles start first with the selection of the transmit mode and a selection of the microphone. The settings you'll be storing in the mic profile will include the transmit low and high cut frequencies, the audio equalizer settings, the microphone gain, the compression level, the downward expander, and the Vox settings. It is important to note that the microphone profiles you'll create are linked to the mode of the transmit slice when the profile is created. I think this will become more clear as we walk through making up a microphone profile. We access the profiles through the main menu bar. First, I'll select Profiles, and then on the drop-down box, I'll select Profile Manager. You can see that I've already created a list and used names of my choice. You can create your own list of profiles, make as many as you'd like, and name them. That's totally up to each user. Looking closer at the manager, you'll see tabs for each type of profile. Since we're first considering the microphone, let's select that. Here we see the listed profiles I've created for the microphones that I use with this radio. I only use a microphone for a single sideband operation, therefore all my mic profiles are for SSB. If I also used AM or FM, I would need to create profiles for these modes also. In this video, as an example, I'm going to label the new mic the Heil GM Elite. First, I'll create a new mic profile. To do this, I'll select the Mic tab and type the name of the mic profile in the text box under the Profile tabs and press Save. I now can see my new profile entry in the list below. Next, I'll go to the flag or the RX panel and select the modes I wish to use for this microphone. I'll select lower sideband as I'll be operating SSB using this microphone. I'll also select the demodulation mode in the P slash CW panel. Here, I'll choose mic. Next, I'll go to the phone panel and set the transmit bandwidth for single sideband by adjusting the TX low and high cuts. I'll choose 50 Hz for the low cut frequency and 3000 Hz for the high cut frequency. Let's move on to the equalizer panel and set up the 8 band equalizer to match the characteristics of the microphone and the owner's voice. Setting up the equalizer requires us to adjust the octave band sliders to get the effects we desire. Smart SDR software allows us to do this by listening to our voice as we make these adjustments. 
In this video, I won't detail the process, but there are several very good videos on YouTube currently available that demonstrate the setup process for a microphone. Once you have the equalizer set, press the save button. Now we're ready to set the mic gain and the compression level. Here I'll be transmitting into a dummy load while adjusting the mic gain. For this setting, I have the processor turned on normal. I press the MOX button, M-O-X, which stands for Manually Operated Transmit, and speak into the mic with a normal voice. I move the mic gain slider back and forth until I achieve the output level I desire. Remembering, if the level meter is green or yellow, I'm within the safe operating range and should not overdrive or distort. If the mic gain is set too high, it can drive the mic level into the red or above 0 dB, which means overdriven or clipped. In this condition, our signal might be distorted. When I have the mic gain adjusted to my satisfaction, I'll again press the Save button in the Profile Manager. Next, we're ready to adjust the downward expander. If you choose to use this feature, you can use it to reduce or eliminate background noise, like those made by a noisy amplifier fan. Using your headphones, turn on the monitor feature and move the slider to the right, allowing you to listen to your voice at a normal level. Without speaking, adjust the downward expander threshold until you can no longer hear the background noise. When you're finished with this adjustment, press Save again on the Profile Manager. Finally, if you use the Vox feature, go to the Phone panel and turn on the Vox by pressing the button. Adjust the sensitivity slider so that the Vox circuit reliably keys the transmitter when you speak in a normal voice. Adjust the delay slider to set the hang time you desire after you stop speaking. When these settings are made, press Save on the Profile Manager. I have now configured the microphone settings for the EM Elite. From now on, when I choose to use this microphone, I merely have to select the name of the profile in the list and press the Load button, and the settings will be loaded for use by the Flex Radio. Now that I have a profile for this microphone, it's easy to make changes for different applications. If I wish to set up this mic for DX instead of rag chewing, I can change the cut frequencies to remove some of the lows, adjust the equalizer to emphasize higher frequencies in my speech. I can also change the speech compression to the DX or DX plus settings. After I've made these changes, I'll type a new profile name in the Profile Manager text box and press Save. I can use this method to customize my settings for many variations. It's a very powerful tool. Now let's look at transmit profiles. Transmit profiles are used to store transmitter power and tune power level settings for each band. You can also store TX Relay and their associated time delays. When you store a transmitter power and a tune power setting, they are specific for the bands in which it was created. The TX Relay and Delay settings will apply to all bands. So what does this mean? Let's look at an example to help clarify. First, we'll access the Profile Manager through the drop-down box under Profiles and then the Profile Manager. Next, select the Transmit tab. You'll see that I have several profiles already listed. I am, however, in need of a profile for RTTY operation, so I'll create that here. With the Transmit tab selected, I'll click on the text box and enter the name of my new profile. I'll use RTTY. RTTY is a mode where the transmitter must operate at a high duty cycle. Therefore, it may be a good idea to operate RTTY under reduced power. With this in mind, I'll set up the profile with a transmitter power setting of 50 watts or about half of the rated output of the transmitter. To accomplish this, I'll set the TX slice 
to 80 or 75 meters. I'll set the RF power by moving the slider to 50%. This should give me about 50 watts transmitter output. I'll have the tuner power set at 10%, which should be appropriate for tuning the rig to the antenna. With these settings made, I'll press the Save button. I have now saved the power setting for the 80-75 meter band under the RTTY transmitter profile. Now earlier I said the power setting under the transmit profile was band specific. Therefore, if I plan to use the RTTY profile on 40 meters, I'll also need to use the same process to set the power for 40 meters. I can do this by clicking on the frequency in the flag of the TX slice and typing any 40 meter frequency into the flag and pressing the enter key. I have now moved to 40 meters. Next I'll set the RF power by moving the slider to 50% as we did before. I'll again leave the tune power set to 10% and with these settings made I'll press the save button. We have now saved the power settings for 40 meters under the new RTTY transmit profile. We'll need to set the power settings for each band we intend to visit when using this profile. If we go back and look at the radio setup window, you'll notice that we can view all the transmit profiles by clicking on the drop down box. I have a profile for use with my alpha linear amplifier. If I select that profile and look at its properties, you can see that the TX1 relay is enabled and is used for the TR relay to key up the amplifier when I transmit through the flex radio. I'll go back to the RTTY profile and disable all the relays because I don't intend to use the amplifier with this profile. When I'm done, I'll go back to the profile manager and press save. There are more transmit profile capabilities, but I'll stop here for this video. You can find additional details in section 15 of the Smart SDR manual. With that, I'm going to move focus now to the global profiles. Global profiles store the settings dealing with the layout of the pan adapters and the slice receivers. Settings saved include the location of the pan adapter, the frequency range, and the bandwidth. Slice receiver parameters include the frequency, mode, the mic profile, RX and TX filter settings, the DAX channel, audio gain, and others. When you load a global profile, It'll call up a pan adapter and a slice, select the slice to control the transmitter, call up a transmit profile which is associated to the slice's TX antenna and the mic profile. So let's look at an example. Let's build a profile for 10 meters single sideband. I'll start by setting up my slice receiver on the 10 meter band. I'll go to the band selector and choose 10 meters. Next, I'll change the frequency to 28.300 MHz by typing the frequency into the slice receiver and pressing Enter. Next, I'll change the mode to upper sideband and select a bandwidth of 2.9 kHz. I'll check the receive and transmit antenna to verify it's set to antenna 1. Next, I'll set my TX profile to TX100 using the drop-down box in the TX panel. This will give me 10 watts of tune power and 100 watts of transmit power. Next, I'll set the microphone profile to GM Elite. This will set my mic gain, my compression level, and the EQ settings. Finally, I'll change the size of the interface window so I'll have enough room for other windows on this monitor. I'm now ready to name and save the global profile. I'll call up the profile manager and save 10 meter SSB under the global profile tab. With this action I've recorded the settings of the pan adapter and the slice receiver that are on the screen. 
so later when I return to the radio and want to duplicate this configuration, I only need to select the profile name I've just created and press load in the profile manager. Alternatively, I can find all the global profiles listed in the drop-down box under profiles on the main menu bar. I can activate any of these profiles by clicking on the item in the list. A nice feature designed into Smart SDR is when I make a change to a setting and if that change affects the transmit profile, I'll see an asterisk appear in the profile box on the TX panel. Likewise, if my change will affect my mic profile, an asterisk will appear by the profile name in the phone panel. If the changes made were of a temporary nature, I can operate the radio and later when I load the profile again, the original version will be returned. If I make a change and want to incorporate it into the profile permanently, I simply go to the profile manager and select the TX or mic profile that contains the change and press save. The asterisk will go away and the profile will be updated. With a better understanding of settings that are associated with each type of profile, you should be able to manage your radio settings more efficiently. You'll soon find you have a set of microphone and transmit profiles and can use them to build new global profiles for specific bands and modes of operation as you need them. The profile system makes the use of all of the various resources available to the Flex Radio easier and more organized. Well, that's about it for my look at the Flex Radio profiles. I certainly hope you found this useful. So with that, I wish you good luck and good DX from Al K0CN, and thanks for watching.